In the book, you say time is a constant, but we treat it as a variable. Explain that to us. Well, time in general is a really interesting thing because the con the construct of a 24-hour day happened a long time ago. And it's incredible to me as technology has evolved. I get really detailed on time management of this book because it's really one of the maybe top five things that's changed my life and how I bend and manipulate time. And so there's a variable to it. We had a 24-hour day when there was no internet. Heck, we had a 24-hour day when there was no electricity, right? And so we've gone from all of these technology upgrades where you can get information, in the, you know, get text, email, Google something, anytime you want. We still measure time in 24-hour increments for a day? That's insane. So I started to look, I started really about 20 years ago saying, this is crazy. We've all had those mornings where we can get more done in a morning than we do in a week. We all go, wow, what an incredible morning. That's because we've compressed time frames. So I now get three days, and every day the average entrepreneur gets one. My first day starts from 6 a.m. to noon, and in there I try to get as much fun, my faith, family stuff, work, et cetera, as I can in a window like that. And then day two goes off, and this little clock goes off in my head about noon every day. It's crazy, but it'll happen for everybody. Where I go, okay, let me recalibrate. Let me take accountability. Let me assess. And then day two starts till 6 p.m. 6 p.m. to midnight's the third day. The more you measure time, right? Most people, once a year, take inventory of their life. High performers, maybe it's once a month. Really great entrepreneurs, once a week. What if it was three times in a given 24-hour day where you're making assessments, adjustments? And by the way, this includes fun, relaxation, and everything. But now I'm getting 21 days a week when the average person I was competing against as an entrepreneur is getting seven. Stack that up over a month, a year, five years, in my case, 30 years, you have a completely different existence in the world and you are happier and more successful. So that's what I mean by bending and manipulating time. You are archaic if you measure a day in 24 hours anymore. Wow. Yeah, that principle alone, you got to let that sit and go, okay, hold on, Ed. You're telling me that instead of seven days, I can do 21 days in a week. That kind of hurts your brain to think about. But what you're saying is we're going to break this out into chunks of productivity, and it's not all work. You're not working for 18 hours. You're saying you're no. building in all of those things, but you're super intentional about those hours. Yeah, and by the way, the more performance is measured, the more it improves. And the more scarce something is, the more valuable it becomes. That's why diamonds are more valuable than paper. If I got 24 hours to get something done, maybe it's not that important. But you start shrink. Here's what the other thing starts to happen. Other people treat you differently. You're walking faster, talking faster. You appear more valuable. You appear busier to people. And there's, a, there's an energy, there's a vibration to that stuff. Now, for me, obviously, Sundays for me are an exception. In my life, that's the day, the Lord, I take time off. But even in those days, I still, I'm still crazy enough that about noon, church is over, I kind of recalibrate. All right, what am I doing with the kids now, right? And somewhere around 6 p.m. on Sundays, kind of my mind starts to gravitate back. All right, what do I have next week? What do my planning need to be? But it's completely changed my life. And it's not easy at first, but after about a traditional month, you're gonna go, this is crazy. It's noon, I'm restarting day two. And it starts to happen to you, and you're just a, I just use the word for it, you almost become superhuman. And I, I'm so glad it's one of the two things you pick because there's so that, I mean, a lot of details on the brain and faith and other things in the book. But if you said to me, hey, I can take something from you that would maybe give you kryptonite in your success. If you took my 21 days a week from me, I'm not sure I'd know where I'd be right now without that. Wow, that is really powerful. So what does that look like when you snap and you go, all right, it's noon, it's time to recalibrate, reassess. What does that process look like for you? Sometimes it's, just, it's a six-second thought of, okay, here I go. You know, um, you know what, what just got done? What did I miss? What, what was the most important thing I didn't handle that? And I, uh, sometimes it's a moment of reflection. You go, that was a great day. Wow, what an amazing breakfast with my daughter. And there's a point of reflection there. But for me, because I'm a little bit crazy, most of the time it's, what didn't get done that now needs to get done in day two. And so it's typically very quick. It's actually almost unconscious when it happens. It's not like I grab my day timer out and start going through some journaling process or anything like that. But an awareness gives us power. Awareness of a negative thought, it loses its power over us. Awareness of a positive thought magnifies it. So it's just becoming a more hyper-aware, more hyper-functional person when I'm just checking in on myself three times a day, and if I could really be hokey, it's a form of self-care. How am I doing? How am I feeling? What emotions did I just have the last six hours, you know, that I want some different ones the next six hours? You know, did I, did I serve God like I wanted to? Did I serve um, my mom like I wanted to? A lot of times for me, it's stuff that would normally get away from me, like, I didn't call my mom yesterday. Now it's noon, I think I'm gonna call my mom this day. And so it's things like that that just remind me to get centered and check in on myself. Mm. 
So what happens, like, you know, you're going through the day and it's easy when things are going well, you're checking everything off the list, you're getting the meetings done, the emails, but what about when things kind of go off track and something kind of catches you and it slows you down? What do you do to get back on the horse? Well, that's the, that's the power of it. You're, you're, you're nailing it. It's that when that first, you typically, you have a bad 9 a.m. in your day, a meeting goes bad, someone cancels, you lose an account. What's that do? Torpedoes the next 16 hours or whatever it is left in your day, 15 hours. Now I got three hours and then it's a new day. And y'all know how you feel. You wake up that new day. It's just a little bit different. There's a different energy. There's a different focus. It's in the past. And so just the fact that there's a transition of a day, which sounds crazy, makes a big difference for me. The other thing I do though for me is I'm, I'm a big believer in changing your state physically. So if it's the top of that end of that day, I, I will literally take five minutes to do some push-ups on the floor, do some jumping jacks, walk around the building. If I can get a workout in. But there's a connection between our mental health and our physical uh, state that we're in. And so for me, when I'm down, when something's gone bad, you know, what happens? You get stressed, you get tense, you hunch over, your breathing becomes shallow, your face drops. So for me, oftentimes, it's just changing my breathing. And here's a nutty one I do. I will give myself the gift of five minutes and I will listen to some of my favorite stand-ups who are buddies of mine like Sebastian Maniscalco or someone like that and just give myself a dadgum laugh for five minutes, it's the same physiology as working out, breathing, shoulders are back, and it just changes you. And also comedy just sometimes gives you a perspective, like this is all okay, right? Mm. It's not the end of the world. But for me, that's the big power of it. If I have a bad day, I got another one in a few hours. And that's, sad. Just trust me everybody, the fact that your competitors or your peers still can get Google and get something done in four seconds that used to take four days, or had to make a phone call and get somebody to pick up and can now text, and they still measure themselves in 24-hour increments, and now you become aware, you become alert, just that alone, you're gonna, you're gonna tell me in two or three months, you go, oh my gosh, my life is different. Everyone around me treats me differently, and it's not perfect, but oftentimes, just the compression of time, the manipulation, I call it bending time, bends and changes your life.